Bernie Sanders killed it in New Hampshire. Overwhelmingly, Democratic voters chose a man who calls himself a Democratic Socialist. Voters want that? I think they don't know what socialism means. Bernie says it means all kinds of good things like fairness, equality, kindness. His supporters say democratic socialism is what countries like Denmark have. And people there have comfortable lives without ruthless capitalism and competition. Boy, I'm starting to talk myself into this. But thinking this way is dumb. I liked what Regina Carson posted on my Facebook page. Socialism sounds so nice, being social. People don't understand it really means for the good of the group over the individual. Still lots of Americans say, that would be good. Let's take care of the group, not just selfish, rich individuals. That's what Democracy for America, a million-member progressive group founded by Howard Dean, believes. They've endorsed Bernie Sanders the first time they made a presidential endorsement ever. Neil Soroka speaks for the group. So you must be happy. There's a lot to be excited about. You know, when someone who is uh, aggressively speaking up uh, for the fact that we all do better when we all do better uh, to win in such a big way, I think that's a good thing for Democrats and I think that's a good thing for the country. <laughs> now, socialism generally means the government owns the means of production. Do you want that? Well, I think there is some antiquated views about what socialism is. I don't think anyone's calling for, you know, state ownership of the gas station down the street. But what we are saying is, is that the current system that we have right now isn't working. Uh, you know, when uh, over 40 million Americans are still living in poverty, at the same time that, uh, you know, a millionaire and billionaire class is trying to essentially own uh, all political discourse in this country, that that's problematic. And that's what we have to work together to dismantle. All right, well, let's take them one at a time. Own political discourse. You're referring to Citizens United allowing these companies, rich people, to spend a lot of money on political campaigns? It's, it's more than that. It's, it's Citizens United, but it's also about uh, the way in which, uh, you know, wealthy and powerful interests control uh, Congress. Uh, the real challenge in this country is how do we make sure that corporations aren't the only ones writing the laws uh, the way they are right now, and that real people, the people that elect representatives, actually get a say in their government? I didn't see the corporations winning exactly when they backed Romney or Hillary in the last election or Jeb Bush this election. All, all this money and spending on ads doesn't seem to by the country. There are going to be times that they win and they lose, but at the end of, in terms of elections, but at the end of the day, when you're uh, helping write the laws, when you're helping uh, determine uh, what, what goes Neil, on in Washington, you're, you're it's, it's hard for little the, people to win. The unions and big government, that's not influential. They aren't writing the laws and manipulating the rules to suit them? Here's the big difference between corporations and, and unions. Unions are a collection of working people coming together to themselves and act change. You know, and, so and, and they don't have a, a profit motive. Uh, but there's a, a distinct profit motive for corporations that unions just don't have. They're um, not looking, when they, you're they don't fighting pay the to leaders make sure that you have a safe workplace. Bucks? I, listen, if we want to have a uh, reform of compensation across, uh, you know, uh, pl corporations and unions, let's do it. Let's make sure that, that nobody is, is, is making an unfair, undue profit off of everyone else's work. And I think that's right, what well, Bernie Sanders is trying to bring fix. to this you, presidential campaign. You want to fix the big wealth disparity, and there is one. And socialism professes yeah. to do that. But how'd that work in... Soviet, in the Soviet Union, or Cuba, or now in Venezuela, how come it never works? How come it leaves everybody poor? There's a lot of countries, you know, Nordic countries that have the kind of democratic socialist uh, worldview uh, that, that works today and is, and is working like quite what? well for working people. When you say Nordic countries, what do you mean? I'm talking Sweden, Norway. I think it would be a great place to be a middle class uh, person. And I want to build a country that it, in the United States that it's, it's a great place to be a middle class uh, working person. In Europe, youth unemployment is 20 percent, double what it is in America. What have they invented in Norway or Denmark? I mean, since Sweden came up with Nokia or Volvo before that, what innovation has come out of Europe? This is a stagnant place. It was rich. Socialism has made them 
complacent and poor. I don't think we have to have this kind of false choice between innovation and a country that works for working people. If we had some sort of system where uh, we can ensure that uh, government and business works for working people, it's going to look different uh, than it looks like in the rest of the world. But, uh, you know, creating this kind of false choice isn't helpful when we know that the system we have right now isn't working for most people, except those at the very tippy tippy top. And, I think it's a real uh, choice to have your system real systemic is worse. Change. But uh, let's go to social media. I ask my social media followers for their thoughts on socialism. On Facebook, Martin Dean posted, uh -oh. Capitalism accomplishes all the goals socialism tries to achieve and does it without theft or use of force. On Google+, Jason Hum added, Capitalism is about choice. Socialism is about force. Now, that's true. Government is force. You may hate these big companies, but you don't have to buy their stuff. You have a choice. The reason why I, I would love to have a single payer health care system is that if something goes wrong in that health care system, if, if I don't get access to the care I need to survive, I can actually go after uh, the politicians that are enacting that policy. I can actually vote them out of office. I don't have that sort of choice uh, when it comes to taking down a, 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 a health insurance industry that actively colludes with one another to uh, what prior are to you Obamacare talking prevent about? me from you even getting access to health care. Government, you have one vote in in Vermont. Your vote won't even count in the presidential election because they'll we know they'll vote Democratic. Among private health insurance companies, you have a choice. If you don't like your company, you can go to another company. You can vote with your dollars. Well, you can vote with your dollars. Uh, if they'll take your money uh, when you want to buy health insurance. That was the big problem that we had uh, prior to Obamacare. And so many of these people that are talking about eliminating Obamacare for some sort of free market system uh, seem to forget that the real challenge many people had was health insurance companies wouldn't even cover them, that they were cherry picking the healthy people versus the sick people. Well, that's what when, insurance if we is. Could all work it, together. It tries to make a profit, and the really sick people may need to be taken care of by government. But it's still competition and better than socialism. Lots of Americans, especially young people, agree with him. There's real excitement at Bernie Sanders rallies. People chant, feel the burn. Feel the burn. Feel the burn. Feel the burn. His supporters that go to see him are totally down with democratic socialism. We're going to explain what democratic socialism is. And what democratic socialism is about is saying that it is immoral and wrong that the top one-tenth of one percent in this country own almost 90 percent. And I do think a lot of Americans feel it's immoral that a tiny number of people control 90 percent of America's wealth. Some people are so rich, while others struggle to pay for things like health care. And that's why Democrats say government ought to step in and redistribute. If that's socialism, what's wrong with that? Well, let's ask economist Ivan Pongrasik. What's wrong with that? It's unfair. Well, it doesn't work. We have a great deal of historical evidence that it has never worked. It will never work. It's a system that is not fitted, fitting for human beings as we truly are. Uh, but we you, you aspire grew, to you that. You grew up under socialism in Yugoslavia. That's correct. You were 14 years old. And I got to observe quite a bit of it. I, I learned a lot about it from my father, who was a public auditor for the state of Croatia. And he saw the rot from within. He was able to observe that the country was falling apart um, because he was checking the books of all of these government-controlled, government-owned businesses. And uh, he started uh, trying to get us out of Yugoslavia already in the 1970s. Um, did not succeed until 1984, but I had a chance, even though I was young, to observe how socialism does not work in person. Well, you're talking about communism. Today's democratic socialists say, we're not talking about that. We just want Denmark. There is a great deal of rhetorical uh, flourish flourishing going on here. Uh, Denmark is not what Bernie and his followers say it is. In fact, um, the Prime Minister of Denmark, uh, Lars Rasmussen, objected to Denmark being referred to as uh, a de democratically socialist country just back in November. He was quite upset about it. He pointed out that, in fact, Denmark has a very strong market economy. And if you start looking at what Denmark has been doing, 
Uh, that is indeed true. In some they ways, they have less they're... regulation than we have, fewer labor rules. It's easier to hire and fire. All correct. And in fact, um, they are ranked extremely close to the United States in terms of the index of economic freedom. You say income redistribution never works. And you can talk about Yugoslavia, where it certainly kept everybody poor, and, and Venezuela more recently. But they say, you know, in Denmark and Europe, the people are closer together. It's a nicer society, better for everybody. I, I suspect that most people talking about Denmark have not been to Denmark, and uh, they really uh, are not speaking the truth. The fact is that um, in Denmark, we have uh, still a great deal of income inequality. For example, 10% of the people control 80% of the wealth, even in Denmark. And it's in addition... the way things work in market economy. There is no way to avoid it if you're going to have a market economy. What they do do is engage in a great deal of income redistribution. Taxes are very high. If Bernie actually wants the U.S. to be more like Denmark, what should actually happen is that uh, taxes would go up on most Americans, most middle-class people, most even poor people, um, and uh, go up considerably.